Well, with the stormy six-hour drive behind us, it's good to be back in the New Hampshire woods once again. The mountain cabin was enveloped with clouds when we arrived, and I was happy to see the place was just as I left it last fall. I can't overemphasize how good it feels just to be here. We didn't travel light. We're loaded for work and play, but I doubt they'll be much accomplished because what I need the most from this journey is some tranquility. And I know just where to find it. The first order of business is to fly the colors. It's a family tradition that I'm proud to carry on. And this tattered flag here, well, it's even older than I am. A little gâteau on English and a rocker by the wood stove is much enjoyed after a long drive. Although some prefer the couch. A six hour drive is like a 40 hour week when you're living in dog years. And he's plum talkered. Sometimes life is hard when you're Frankie. <laughs> he's got <a> teddy ball. <laughs> oh, you tired, Frankie? Are you tired? Poor boy. A little cabin work today, but not much. Just enough to make me feel like I got something accomplished. I'll get this floor torn up and call it a day. Quite a few pounds of nails there. Well, pulling all these nails today really made me reflect back when I was in my late teens, you know, supporting myself since I was 16, trying to keep a car on the road, all that. And then when I bought the property, I was struggling to make those land payments, but I wanted to build a cabin. So I went around to a lot of construction sites, got whatever used lumber I could get. I made arrangements with a bunch of different companies where I could come and get wooden crates. I pulled the crates apart, pulled all the nails like I'm doing today. But back then, I had a bucket of nails like this. I even pounded them out and straightened them all out and reused them. <laughs> I did what I could, but I built the cabin all right. Yep. There's something to be said for staying focused, you know. Get some stuff done that way. I went off looking to find tranquility, and the best place to find that is a beaver pond. I got to thinking about the beavers that built me a pond at the New York place, and suddenly a beaver appeared. I tried to imitate the vocalizations I've heard coming from their lodge back at home, and I must have been saying the right things because he hung around contentedly for as long as I continued to speak to him. Well, didn't that just make for an interesting morning? See these piles here? There's two of them. These are caster mounds that the beaver made. He pushes the mud from the bottom of the pond up on the bank into a pile and he deposits his caster scent on them. And it's to attract a mate and I can smell it in the air here. There's a little more woods lore for you from the beaver pond. I worked my way up the feeder creeks to look for trout. I'm looking in the same places as the mink. By dancing a worm in front of these overhanging banks, we'll see who's hiding under there. 
If you spend a day following mink tracks in the snow, he'll show you where to fish. You can learn a lot from nature if you're observant. Now these native brookies may be small, but they're awful tasty. I'll keep working my way upstream because today I'm going all the way to Headwaters. There's another beaver colony, more dams to cross. Now you're probably wondering where I left my fish pole. <laughs> well, it's right here, man. These little telescoping rods are priceless when trekking in country like this. And you don't need to spend a fortune on them either. At only 15 bucks each, they suit my needs just fine. I keep one rigged with a spinner and one with a worm, and I switch back and forth depending on the water I'm fishing. Then in the pack they go, and I don't get to worry about getting snagged on all the branches. Now look at the trout waters I found here. Yes, sir. Now a little worm dressing on a panther martin ought to do it. Now that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Looks like dinner to me. <laughs> That's the spot I want to go to. That pool down below that rip. I'm certain I'll take a trout out of there. Now there's some good eats right there, man. That's good stuff. beaver cut down that cherry tree. Can you imagine having the strength in your jaws and your teeth sharp enough to do that? That's a pretty good sized tree right there. That beaver thought this was a good place to snack and I agree. But I think I'll pass on the tree bark and settle for a handful of pistachios. <laughs> I went seeking tranquility today and I certainly found it. It's been a great day.